Hi there, ladies and gentlemen of that humble internet. Ryan here, aka the Ryan Man. Welcome back to some more Doki Doki Blue Skies, a mod for Doki Doki Literature Club, a game which is after its release in what? 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 When did it come out? 2017? Came out a few years ago, something along that line. It's been out for a while, and it's only just now finally getting some content update. I'm sure there will be nothing wrong with the content update. I'm sure it'll be all good, wholesome, bull crud. What was I doing the last time besides ruining any chances I had of having a good, happy ending with your... And I don't mean happy ending in the way you're thinking of it, you freaking pervert, gutter mind people. You'd think that with all the poems I've written so far, it'd be pretty easy to start uh, on yet another one. But it is not. But I've been having trouble gaining any inspiration in writing a horror-themed poem. In order to celebrate... In order to celebrate Halloween! Mm -hmm. Okay. Monica asks us all to write themed poetry. We're, spo has, we're supposed to have some kind of Halloween party as well. A Halloween party consisting of... Four people. Okay, that's fine. I don't really know what to expect, but I'm looking forward to it. I did watch a horror anime to get in the mood. What what horror anime did we watch? High School of the Dead? I wouldn't count on that as horror, my friend. <laughs> Parasite? Parasite was pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to be in the mood to watch some horror anime, a anime stuff during my weekend. <clears throat> but I'm not sure if it helped much. Don't get me wrong, there's a great bit of surreal horror media. The sound design successfully created tension that kept stacking up over time. The graphics were quite creepy as well. They were done in the style of old paper or puppet crafts. Uh, letting an air of mystery and anxious story. My god, if YouTube wasn't such... Mm, such pains in, in the buttocks. I would have loved to have gone with some friends and done a complete let's watch commentary of some messed up yet fun animes like High School of the Dead or Goblin Slayer. I tried to do it with Goblin Slayer with my buddy Aaron. You remember Aaron? Monica tried deleting him into the recycling bin one time. I digress. It's not that you... T Actually, that was a bit unfair to say you two could be a pain in the buttocks. It wasn't you two that had a problem with me trying to do a let's watch. It was the people over in Japan land. Mm. I'll find a way to get around it in case people want, it, want uh, to see me give some reactions to certain bits of media besides gaming. I don't know, I'll see. Despite all this though, my mind still draws a blank when I confront the paper in front of me. I'm reminded of that part of Spongebob where he spent like six hours writing THE. It doesn't help that I hardly got any sleep last night either. It's hard to shake off this feeling of exhaustion. Ugh, I don't want to procrastinate too much, but... Come on! I've got to think of something. How in the world does Stephen King do this? Dude, Stephen King hasn't been able to do Stephen King in years. Have you seen some of that man's content? I love the dude, don't get me wrong. I think he's a fantastic uh, horror writer. But you can definitely tell at times where he was running dry in the pool of creativity. And that's not even, again, knock at him. That, that goes for everyone. Everyone. Alright, it's getting a little bit late, but it probably wouldn't hurt to go out and walk around for a few minutes. Exercise can energize you, right? You could always pick up a can of coffee or tea somewhere, too. Plus, something might come to me while I'm walking. We just wanted a, an opportunity to show off more of these scenes at night. As I make my way outside, I see the stars here and there beginning to emerge from the darkening sky. It looks like the there might be a small chance of rain, but it's a bit nippy as well. I don't think uh, it's anything to worry about, though. Hmm... What's a good place for poetry inspiration? Maybe the lake Yuri tried showing us? I stretch a langley as I stroll past a set of train tracks. Horror. Ooh, if we're passing train tracks, maybe we can write something about Teke Teke. If you don't know who I'm talking about when I say Teke Teke, just take a moment to go look up Teke Teke. 
Isn't there a graveyard around here somewhere? If I recall correctly, it's a quick walk uh, from where I'm at. Say, now that I think of it, my sister sent me an article literally yesterday telling me about their honeybees out there that make their honey from rotting corpses. Nature is beautiful. It'll probably uh, seriously creep me out, but art requires sacrifice. Am I, am I just in the minority of people that does not get creeped out by graveyards? Especially at night? Just me? Eh, okay. A few minutes later, I spot the wrought iron gate to the cemetery. It's quite dark as there aren't any lights, but I can still make out the dark greens of the ivy snaking up uh, the iron fence, as well as a flash of violet just inside the gate. Wait a minute! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, people. <laughs> people are not gonna know why I'm laughing. The, you, the common people who are stumbling across this are not gonna know why I'm laughing. <laughs> Just know... You don't need to know the de all the details. Just know it's reminding me of a very short video clip one of my buddies at work showed. It involves a man holding a toaster inside of an ambulance. And he just... Ha <laughs> Wait a minute! <laughs> I can't even go into further details because one, I'll spoil it. And two, oh, it's bad. <laughs> Hey, Yuri! Look at that snazzy coat, girl! Holy fuck! Wait! Why are you out in the middle of the night at the cemetery? She seems to panic for a moment after noticing me, but quickly regains her composure as we approach each other. Oh, you boys and girls are in for it now. I'm about to do voice acting. <clears throat> uh, uh, hi, Ryan. I... D didn't see you there. Sorry if I startled you now. Oh, it's no bother. Wait. Why is Yuri visiting the graveyard? Does she also just, like, find comfort in graveyards? Uh, I- uh, Oh, no. Uh, what do you mean, oh? Oh, not the O oh, that her, I think her mother is dead and she's visiting her when there's no one else around. Hey, Yuri! Are you trying to find inspiration for your Halloween poem, too? She glances around for a moment as if uh, processing my question, wondering no no living man could possibly be this <laughs> flippin' dumb. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm assuming you were doing the same. Yep. Guess great minds think alike. Uh, can someone, like, reach over and grab my boy here and literally try and force his head through between one of these bars? Thanks. Yuri gives a light chuckle at that. I was thinking of getting something to drink, too. Want to come with me? Hey, you know what? If her mother turns out to be alive, someone is free to just throw egg right at my goddamn face. Well, it's getting a bit late. Actually, you know what? I'm batting a thousand and guessing dead people. Because I think I guess that Emmy's dad is dead. <laughs> oh, no problem. I'm just planning on grabbing tea or coffee from the store uh, for a minute. I, I see. In that case, I, I could probably keep you company for a bit. Smiling at each other, we start making our way to the shopping district. Hmm. Yuri, I think you have something on your shoe. Is that so? We slow to a stop and she bends down to pick something off her shoe. Well, at least we know it wasn't dog flop. Huh? Is that a rose petal? It does not take a man smarter than me, of all people, to be putting these two and two together to make five. 
Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? She wasn't at the graveyard laying flowers down to here lies Yuri's hopes and dreams. I just made two references back to Spongebob in the span of like five minutes. I'm on fire. It, it, it must have come off some of the flower arrangements back in the cemetery. Ah, makes sense. It's nice to know that people's graves are being tended in there. Hmm, I agree. Being forgotten by your loved ones, it isn't very comforting thought. Were you walking around there for a while? Um, for a little bit. I had some troubles settling on certain theme for my poem. That's a surprise, considering how much you love horror. You would think so, but, but it's difficult to pick one cohesive theme when there's so many you choose from. So why do you end up deciding on? Uh, um, well... Uh, would it be alright with you if I kept it a surprise for now? <laughs> sure, I can respect that. As we pass by a really uh, small shops and cafes, a few drops of water splash onto my face. Yeah, that's definitely a few, Chief! Ho! Oh! The droplets soon increase in size and frequency, and before we know it, we're caught in a downpour. Should have brought an umbrella after all. Do you want to head inside somewhere? Yes, please. We jog up the convenience store, the cold rainwater splashing up our, our ankles as we slosh through puddles. The entrance under the, the awning is thankfully dry, the yellowed lights inside comforting in the night. Pushing the door open, we're met with a small tinkling of a bell. Let's see... Where's the drink sack? Shit! Where? Where? Where are the drinks? My boy is as blind as he is dumb. My god, it's literally as if someone threw me into a story. <laughs> oh, I, I think I see it in the back. I follow Yuri to the drinks cooler filled with a colorful array of bottles and cans. What are you in the mood for? She pops open in the door and grabs a bottle of green tea. While I usually prefer my tea freshly made, the occasional chilled bottle tea is a nice change of pace. Yeah, it does kind of change the taste when it's hot versus when it's cold. Hmm, the iciness of cold tea can give a certain sweetness. We continue our conversation as we take our drinks to the register. Doesn't seem like the rain is letting up. We'd probably get soaked if we were to go out now. But we should really be getting back. Hmm. Over the, the other side of the store, I spot a stand uh, carrying a few umbrellas. How about we just buy an umbrella then? It'd definitely be getting sick while trying to get back home. I suppose we can do that. Stepping away from the counter, I grab a plain black umbrella as Yuri grabs a striped one. Whoa, what are you doing? Buying an umbrella? Aren't... Little fast, little fast, little fast. Little fast on that one, my boy. Aren't we just gonna uh, share one? It'll save us some money. Smooth. Um, uh, are you sure? Uh, I wouldn't want to be a bother. It'd be, un it'd be unfair to ask you to pay for it, too. Don't worry about it. I've been needing a new one anyway. There's no need for us to buy two when just one will work. That's true. Alright. Thank you for being so considerate. She fidgets with her hair as she says this, a blush creeping across her cheeks. Man, man shy girls are seriously cute. Find yourselves a cute shy girl, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I said ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no problem. Find yourselves a pretty shy girl who could probably also secretly, like, fend for herself. How do I explain? I don't know. It's still raining pretty hard. I believe the bus should be here in a minute. Don't uh, you usually walk around town? Well, yes, but 
The weather. Oh, right. Let's head to the stop so you don't miss it then. After unfolding the umbrella, I wait for Yuri to join me under it. She's not coming closer though, instead electing to stand still, staring at her feet. Is something wrong? No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm fine. She inches towards me until there's only a few inches between us. Let's go. We make our way over the bus stop. Once there, I want my bottle of tea. It's probably not the best weather to drink ice cold tea, but I already bought it. And I'm gonna drink it! Hey, Yuri. Mm -hmm. Yes? I meant to ask you earlier, but how did you learn to make tea? It's not such an interesting story. Come on, I want to get to know you better. And given that uh, tea is such an integral part of your character, I feel like I should know more about what, what it means to you. An integral part of my character? <laughs> I mean, you are passionate about tea, aren't you? I, I suppose so. Are you recording? Okay, I want to make sure I didn't make that goof. But I do have other interests too, you know. Yeah, and we're gonna get to that. But right now I know of tea, so let's cover that one first. Yeah, I was just joking. I guess it wasn't a very good joke. N no, you're fine. I'm just not very good with humor. Nor am I! Oh, God! Yuri sighs, looking up into the sky. My mother was the one who taught me how to make tea. Ah, that makes sense. She was the one who helped to teach you uh, how to cook, after all. Yes, that's right. I believe I was just about to finish primary school when I first started... When I first tried to make tea. Of course, it didn't go about making it all at once, but over time, she allowed me to do more and more. She taught me how to prepare tea in all manner of ways, from western to eastern styles. You'd be surprised how many different infusers, strainers, and teapots she owned. She... My boy, lean into this, lean into this text box, okay? Okay, are you looking? Are you looking? Not you, the audience, because you, the audience, I know you're smart, but me, I'm talking to me. I know, I, I, me is not the smart, so I want me to lean right into this. And I'm hoping my thoughts line up with my character again. You see this word? Owned. Notice, she did not say she owns. You'd be surprised how many different infuser strainers and teapots she owns. But no, she didn't say that. She didn't say that. She said owned. It's a past tense. She no longer owns it. Do you want to know why? Because she's dead. <laughs> you can't own things if you're dead. That's illegal. <laughs> Sounds like it's a major hobby for her. <laughs> How do you bring that up in conversation? How do, how does a smart, smooth man who's good with women, how does one bring that up in a conversation with someone? So, so hey, girl, uh, you bring that up in a lot of past tense. Is she dead? Was she in that graveyard back there? <laughs> was she? Was she in that graveyard? My mother even eventually... <laughs> my mother even... <laughs> My my mother. <laughs> oh my god! I need to hit myself to get myself to stop. My mo my mother even eventually taught me how to properly perform a tea ceremony. Dang! Seriously? Why aren't you in the club? There's a club for tea. What the f, Japan? What don't you have a club for? Someone please don't actually make a list. Let's let's just have the imagination run wild. Uh, I, I don't know. I was just always intimidated by the idea of actually performing in front of other people. There's so many ways you can mess up. But you always seem really graceful to me. Well, I'm glad you didn't join the tea ceremony club though. Because otherwise I wouldn't have met you. 
Oh, oh, that makes me smile and blush a little bit. Just, just when I, just when my character says some really dumb things, he, he, he can eventually sometimes come out and pull out one of these. That's, that's good. Because otherwise, I wouldn't have met you. That. I'm giving my boy some props because he's messed everything else up until this point in his life. I'm gonna give him a win. <laughs> give my boy a win. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's the completion of the win. Yeah! Yeah! She blesses and looks down again, smiling at her shoes. We can smile again! <laughs> oh! I'm not as graceful as you may think, though. <laughs> I kind of find that hard to believe. Y you just haven't seen me make many mistakes yet. That's a lie! I've seen you make two mistakes so far. One, when you nearly broke your dang ankle. And two, when you decide to be dumb enough to actually engage me in conversation. <laughs> There was one time, I, I wasn't careful enough when handling the hot tea kettle one day, and nearly spilled it on myself. Oh yeah, she nearly completed the look of the Hanako. That is funny in more than one way. You people just don't know it yet. <laughs> <clears throat> My mother realized what was happening, and put her hand over the spout to keep it from burning me. But because of that, she ended up with burns on her hand. For a while, I, I just felt so awful for allowing my ineptitude, uh, ineptitude to, to hurt my mother. I didn't touch the tea kettle again for quite a while. Over time, however, I ended up becoming interested in tea again. Well, I'm glad that you got back into it. Yuri begins come, uh, being clumsy isn't something that I'm used to. When she's calm, she's so elegant. I I yes, I am too. Your mom sounded really nice, by the way. I wonder if I should adopt that philosophy of when you meet someone new, just assume everyone else that, that is associated with their lives is dead until I'm proven wrong. I think that's a great way to go about it. I shiver a bit as the wind above is my body, whipping my clothes around me. Thankfully, the bus shows up a moment later. It's bright headlights, uh, heralding its arrival. We stumble uh, a brother and manage to, to find seats next to each other. Yuri moves her arms to her sides, laying out a deep breath and looking out at the night sky beyond the window. The passing streetlights reflect off her eyes, shining golden over the violet of her, of her irises. Sinking lower into my seat, I sigh in contentment. Even though we aren't talking, it still feels nice to be close to her. After a minute, Yuri signals uh, her oncoming stop. As I stand up to exit the bus with her, Yuri stops me. You really don't have to walk with me all the way back. Isn't this out of your way? Yeah, but I don't want you to get sick. I bought the umbrella to share with you the full way. Come on, I insist. I gently pull Yuri along with me, opening the umbrella as we leave. Um, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I got to. It's quite serene now. The rain is lighting up uh, to, to a pitter-patter, and the occasional breeze certainly rustles the trees around us. Ryan? Yes? Do you ever notice how the light is when it's raining? What? What do you mean? Well... She looks around for a moment, then points out a street lamp down the street. Whenever it rains, it it almost seems like the properties of light are completely changed. And it, it's especially obvious at night. Now that she mentions it, 
The lights do seem a bit different. It's something I think I've noticed subconsciously, but never really paid any attention to. Cold gust. You know what's awesome sometimes when it rains when it's the summer? Is if it's nice and humid, like hot afterwards when it's done, and all that mist and steam is just like, it's coming off everything, especially the road like a fog. That's dope. Nature is amazing. A cold gust blows by, causing Yuri and I to huddle close together. That gust of wind is her dead mom trying to urge us together. But what the dead mom does not re what dead ghost mom does not realize is that I am a complete idiot and I am going to be probably picking all the wrong choices, probably made too many wrong choices already, and this is going to end poorly. Sorry in advance, Yuri's dead mama. Dead until proven otherwise. That's how. That's my philosophy for everything from now on. Our shoulders are touching. Whoa! But, uh, by this point, providing a small smidgen of warmth. Yuri doesn't seem to notice, or at least she's acting like she doesn't. But it might just be that she's lost in her thoughts right now, though. She's been doing that more and more frequently. It's been nice to see her really open up to me. Yeah. It's almost like the lights are glowing. Well, of course, lights glow, but it's... I don't know. Michael Bayish? Yuri nods her head. God, I'm... The way the light bounces off each individual droplet seems to create a sort of halo around the street lamps. At times, it's almost like the light's dancing around in the air as it refracts through the rain. It's as if the lights are spirits, burning out their life forces like fireflies. Showing that not all the world is darkness. Huh. I never thought of it like that before. That's kind of metal. My words are met with a faint smile. Every so often, I wonder if the lights in the distance are friendly will-o'-wisps. I wonder if they're guiding me somewhere, urging me towards some far-off destination one step at a time. It's unnerving when they suddenly disappear right before you. When something cuts off the, their connection to the world, leaving everyone being guided in the dark. You ever go by a street lamp and it goes out even when it's still night out and you instantly think it's ghosts? That's why I usually carry something loaded with uh, rock salt. It's when that happens that you realize what you've been taking for granted. You begin to truly appreciate how welcoming the warmth was before, in contrast to the new chilling darkness. Yeah, you can feel kind of lonely when you're walking by yourself in the dark. Not to mention, it's kind of dangerous to do so. You haven't been doing that a lot lately, have you? Uh, don't worry, I haven't. Well, good. If you ever need to walk around at night, just ask me, and I'll be there. And I'll usually bust out the necessary precautions to ensure that, you know, none of the things that usually stalk around the night decide to make a guest appearance. You don't ever want to be doing that, like you're going along, trying to go about your day at night, and suddenly you, you just see guests starring the skulls you and it like, what the fuck? Plus, it feels a lot less lonely when you walk around with friends. Even if you're lost in the dark, if you have friends by your side, you'll at least be able to trust that someone's going to stick by you. Unless that person is afraid of the dark, and they go out like a fainting goat as soon as it's dark. Ryan, that sounds awfully specific. Yes, it is. Person that I was friends with in college, they know who they are. They're not ever going to watch this. No one else is ever going to know who I'm talking about, but I know who I'm talking about. That's that's all you need to know. It's probably just me, but it feels like Yuri and I are a bit closer than we were before. Talking about ghosts! Oh, God, I wish I had... <laughs> I'm about to open my mouth to speak again when she abruptly comes to a stop, nearly causing me to trip. We're at a quiet intersection I'm not too familiar with. Well, Ryan, thank you for accompanying me on the way home. Hmm? Aren't I walking all the way back with you? Y you only want to get wet now, right? I, I mean, 
The rain's let up quite a bit by now. Really, I wouldn't want you to go too far out of your way. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Thank you for the offer, though. All good. It's been my pleasure. You were right. It is less lonely walking with friends. Her smile sends a light of warmth through my body. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, see you tomorrow, then. Goodbye, Ryan. That was precious and adorable. This is also precious and adorable. This... This feels weird. Let's show! This feels weird. It's like... Not for nothing, what's the other... What have been the other visual novels I've gone through? Is Katawa Shoujo? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's kind of a show, show, but it's like, what were the other ones? I know I've... Is this... What I'm trying to get is, is this what it's like to go through a normal love visual novel? There's no twists? There's no turns? I mean, you think I'd be used to it with Kato a Shoujo, right? I've been through a bit of Kato Shoujo. You think I'd be used to this, but when I think back to everything, I've covered more weird visual novels than I did the normal. And now here I am with something normal, born from something not normal. And I, my body doesn't know how to respond. Oh, by the way, our dumbass got sick. I'm gonna leave it there. That's not that. I'm gonna leave it there. I don't know how much longer this could possibly go on for. This is probably, this is probably gonna fill the stack. It's already been filling quite a load. That was a god-awful thing to say. I'm gonna go now before it's too late.